Okay, in this video, we're going to walk through how to use the updated level editor in Golf with Your Friends. Uh, when you launch Golf with Your Friends, now the level editor has its own menu item right on the front page. So we're going to select on level editor, and then it's going to load the level editor for us. When you first load the level editor, you're going to get a screen that looks somewhat like this. Now to start, you're not going to have any existing files or existing maps. Uh, so the only option you really have is to hit new. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit new, which is probably what you're doing if you're just starting off anyway, so we can create a brand new map. Now we can give our map a name. We can describe it. Then we can choose the music and there's a uh, set list of music tracks that we can play from. Then we can change the sky. You can see in the background the different skies that there are. Uh, and then these are checkboxes that will start to check as you progress and build your map. So at this point, I'm going to hit save. And now I have a new map in my list of maps. And we can start building. Start building. We're going to pick uh, one of these items at the top to open up our menu bar. The main item that you're going to be working out of is the turf icon. And once you select the turf icon, you get all your different pieces for a golf map. Now, along the side here, we have different themes. Uh, and they correspond with the official maps that have been released inside uh, Golf with Your Friends. And as they release new maps, uh, I would expect these to increase as well. But what you're going to be doing is going to be similar with any of them. You're going to grab a piece, and once you select it, it's going to be available inside here. You can see it right here. And we're just going to place it first. And after we place our first item, uh, now we can do some configuration. We're going to select the item. And as soon as we select the item, we can see that a box appears in the upper right hand corner. Uh, I would recommend selecting snap. What snap does, it gets all the movements to appear on a grid. So it's really easy to select another item and get it to line up because they're all going in steps together. Now, if you want to, you can change the, uh, the size of each snap. So you can go to three. And what this would do is it would jump by three items each time. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would recommend keeping snap on and placing it to one. Uh, and if you get into a, a specific scenario where you want to adjust things up and down for that one piece, you can unselect it and then you can adjust the position just ever so slightly without it snapping through. But for the most part, you're probably going to want to have snap on and adjust things that way. Now, once snap is on, uh, it'll be a lot easier to move and drop new items. Now, before we go into dropping all sorts of different items, I want to talk about the basic movement of the camera because that's going to be really important. To move the camera, the basic buttons that you're going to use are A to move to the left, D to move to the right, S to move back, W to move forward, and a change that they've done for up and down, and it actually makes things a lot easier. It's going to be Q to move down and E to move up. It actually makes things a lot easier. Now to move and twist around, we actually have to click the right mouse button, and then we can drag the mouse, and it sort of moves the angle of the camera. So with all of this together, you can start to get really good at moving things around and getting the perfect view and making sure everything lines up. You know, for example, this might look like it lines up from this point of view, but it's important to move the camera around so you can see from different angles that it doesn't exactly actually line up. So we have to move that up. Okay, now getting back to our menu in the upper right here, um, once we have an item selected, um, we have three different options we can do to adjust a piece. Uh, the item in the uh, left 
is going to be our move box. So if we select an item and pick this, then we have the options to move our pieces from side to side, left to right, back and forth. If we select this box, then we have our stretch and skew option. And we can increase things uh, by width, by height, uh, in some cases thickness, but most items uh, don't have any thickness. Uh, so this one's not going to be important. Now, in a case like this tool or this piece, it does have actual thickness. So we can go up and down like that, and that impacts this one. But for a flat piece like this, uh, increasing the thickness really isn't going to make much of a difference other than maybe the cup depth, uh, which really isn't that important. And then finally, we have our rotation tool. Uh, if we click on this circle, we get little icons here so that we can begin to rotate our pieces around. Now, one of the things that I would do immediately um, when you get your rotation tool is change the snap. By default, it changes everything by one degree. I'd recommend going 15 degrees. Now, another good one to do if you want to keep things simpler is just do it at 90 degrees. And what that's going to do is make sure that you can only rotate things on 90 degree axes. Now, if you don't adjust your snap um, and you have it set to one, just be careful that you're looking at the degrees as you're rotating it because you can look like you rotated everything perfectly. But, um, you know, this looks like it's pretty lined up, but it's actually a degree off. You can see right here it's 269 instead of 270. If we did it at 15 degrees, it would be pretty simple to see when something is off. 15 degrees hits all of the 90 degree points and all the 45 degree points. Uh, so I think that's a good one to set your snap to for rotation. But in addition to rotating um, across that axis, we can also rotate across the other axes. And it's gonna be important to you that you see which field is highlighted over which field is it feels like you should be rotating on it's whichever is highlighted is going to be the one that moves so it looks like i'm touching the blue um but that's not what's highlighted so that's not what's going to move you can see i can try to move it up and down it's not really doing it because it doesn't think i have that one grabbed you just have sort of have to fiddle around until it highlights the axis that you want and then you can rotate that Okay, so I'm gonna adjust this so it lines up over here. And maybe I don't want this piece at all anymore. If I hit the delete key on the keyboard, it'll get rid of it. So if there's a piece that you don't want, you can type delete on the keyboard and it'll get rid of that. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about some of the um, quick options. So if I hold Alt on the keyboard as I'm picking an item, it allows me to copy it and as long as I don't let go of it I can click it again and I have another copy of it so this is a way to quickly build out uh, a large area that uses the same piece and you can keep holding down alt as you move the camera around and that'll work just fine let go of it if you want it to be the last one that you drop all right now we're going to move to our next box and our next box is walls and other obstacles that are going to be mainly across the side of your map. The main item that I want to talk about and the most important one is going to be the post. If you use a post, what you first want to do is drop your post and then adjust its height. Now I can see here it's sort of floating and I don't want that. So before I drop this post, I'm also going to Go to the stretch and skew, and I'm going to increase it. Now one of the things that you're seeing right now is the item to increase the up and down isn't always what it looks like. It looks like this is a little bug that happens from time to time. Uh, you would expect this green one to increase the height of the log up and down, but for whatever reason um, on this piece it's the blue one that's doing it. Okay, once we got our post down and we have it at the height that we want and it touches the ground and it connects to the golf course, I'm gonna hold the Alt key and then I'm gonna let go of the Alt key and then I'm gonna hold the Shift key. 
And then when I hold the shift key and then drag, it also builds uh, walls and barriers across with us. Now, before I drop this one, I wanna make sure that I'm still holding the shift key down. Then when I place it, I can move over to my next corner. We can move the camera around with us to make sure that we have everything placed where we want. And this is gonna be an easy way to add walls and barriers to your map without needing to do them all individually. Just by holding this shift key. All right, so now there's a couple spots where I double placed some posts. I did one from earlier. And then we know this one's gonna have one as well. Okay, so now we have a really basic course here. Uh, there are other wall features that you can include on the, on your map as well if you wanna get into more uh, creative designs. And if we go into some of the other map styles, there are other types of posts that we can use as well. And in the earlier edition of uh, Map Builder, it was only this wood post that automatically built walls for us, but some of the other ones will as well. So in Oasis, we can do the same type of thing. We can place this down, adjust our height the way we want it, and then we can place it, hold shift, and then it creates a wall. Now, the wall that it creates in Oasis is not perfect, but it's still a good way to save us some time. I find it's much easier to build out a wall like this and then go to the individual walls and adjust them down to what I think is gonna look good, rather than trying to add these all individual-like. And you can experiment with some of the other posts that are out there. Not all of them are going to um, create automatic walls. Like we can see in Candyland, it does not do it yet. Yeah, winter does it. Okay, the next uh, box that we're gonna talk about is the scenery box. Typically, these are items that you would put in the background to pretty up your level. Um, but if you want, in addition to putting them in the backgrounds, a lot of these items you can actually put inside your course to use as an obstacle. Uh, so we have this present, we could drop it down in the middle of the course and now it's an obstacle there. Adjust the height as we want, and there we go. Uh, and again, like the others, in addition to having the one based off the scene that you built, go to the different scenes and you'll see different styles of walls or different styles of scenery that you can place in the map or outside of the, the map as decoration. Now the fourth box is typically uh, going to be features and this is where you're gonna have any moving objects. Now not all of these necessarily move, this pipe doesn't move, um, but it can be used and it's something that's designed to be a feature in the map to be useful. Uh, so if we wanted to use this tube, we could place it over the hole. Although I don't think this is lining up perfect. And now they have to shoot it inside here to get close to the hole. Um, you know, each of these objects has its own property. If you've played the space map, you know the black hole will suck a ball in and then shoot it out in a random direction. Uh, this is the the wind entity. Different um, scenery uh, official map options will have different uh, special features. Uh, so explore through these and use these as obstacles, any moving piece that you want, um, any little fun little things like that. This is where you can go in and pick uh, those features for your map. And then finally, we have uh, some of the core things uh, to finish and create our map and make it uh, usable. Uh, the first thing, every course needs to have a spawn spot. So we're going to drop the spawn and we want it to be someplace where the ball will drop down and be on your course. 
So one thing I should point out is the shadow of the ball is not directly underneath it. Uh, the shadow is based off of the, the light coming from this angle, and that's why it's off to the side. So you can't just base the shadow on where the ball is going to drop. We can put it down and then see. Uh, once we drop the ball down, we want to rotate it so that it is going to be facing the right direction. Now, one of the things I should point out with this is the direction is not always consistent inside the level editor. You'll find sometimes the arrow pointing this way means you'll be starting off looking this way. And sometimes you have to do the opposite. So you're just going to have to experiment to see um, which direction you need to face your ball after you uh, play test it and I'll show you how you can do that. Okay, the next item that we need is a, uh, an image for the uh, workshop. So typically you're gonna do this at the very end before you publish, but I'm just gonna drop this down now to show you how the workshop picks its image. We can see right here, this is what this camera sees and we can adjust it so it sees whatever part of the map you want it to see. Uh, and then we have this loading screen map. This is typically what the loading screen will show, although they're doing some experiments with that right now. Right now it's showing the whole course as a whole from the high point of view. A lot of times I want this to be the same, so I put these cameras right next to each other. So it's very similar to each other. The workshop has a square image. Um, the loading screen has a 16 by 9 image. Now in order for your holes to work, you need to put an ending piece in there. And actually this is getting in my way, I don't really want to have that in here. So we need to pick one of these flag poles and we need to drop it in. Now we want to make sure that the height is okay. The ball needs to touch this yellow circle for the map to know that you were successful. Now, if you don't do this correctly, for example, you know, you just put it maybe up here. If you have it like this, then what is going to happen is the user does not have to get the ball in the hole. All I have to do is hit this yellow square at all and the level ends. So we want to drop this level, uh, this yellow square. So it's inside the hole. The only way they can get to it is if they sink the ball in the hole. Now, I like having the flag. It lets the user know where the, the hole is and it's easy for them to find. Uh, but we don't need to have a, um, a flag in a hole. We can drop, whoops. We can drop one of these inside there and that'll work just as well. All right, let me place my hole square back in. Okay, and if we look inside there, we need to see our our yellow disc so that we can confirm, you know, if the ball goes in there, it's going to hit that yellow uh, disc and end the map. Now we can also adjust it up and down. You don't want it to be above because then they can just rocket it over and it won't uh, make a difference. Uh, so in order for them to win it, they need to hit this very bottom of the hole. Now, if you're feeling like uh, it's a little risky, it's really close, uh, this is where you can unsnap it and make it really clear. Um, you know, raise it up so as soon as they get to this point, you know, you, and then the, the course ends. Now, some of the other ways to end a course, you can have, um, and the same concept applies. All the user has to do is nail this circle, touch it, they don't have to stop inside of it, and uh, the, the course is over. Uh, the same is true with these icons right here and this one. These are all um, stops the level. There's also basketball hoops and hockey nets. If you drop a hockey net, it includes a yellow circle. A hockey guy sort of guards it, and all you have to do is get the ball inside of this hockey net. The um, levels over. Uh, basketball hoop is going to be similar. We drop our basketball hoop. You probably want to add a ramp somewhere so they can ramp it up. And if they shoot the ball inside the hoop, it's going to touch this square, ends the, uh, the level, and they jump to the next spawn. 
Now we have a few other entities. Um, if we wanted to add lava to our level, we can add a lava icon. And then we probably want to stretch this out. And then to make up for the fact that we just have lava sitting out here, I'm going to extend my walls. So I'm going to hit Alt on that post. And then when I place it down, I'm going to hold Shift. Okay, and you can see, since the lava goes right up to it, it makes this ugly little flashing. There's several ways we can sort of adjust this. We can unsnap the walls and just get it to go a millimeter, about a little bit above it. And then they're not taking over the same space. I can make them all, actually, I'm going to type it in, I'm just going to type it in as one hundredth away 14.01 it can be difficult to use the drag and drop that precise and that small so once you see it you can just go in and adjust everything exactly the way you want it's on the z-axis okay so now they're not right on top of each other so they don't have that spill effect and it's not really noticeable before I do anything else, I'm going to re-enable snap. And there we go. Um, now, if I didn't want to use the lava icon, this blue one is for water. And we can have them jump into water. This uh, bluish one is a goo. And so is this green one. These are like bouncy goos. This red one is sort of like a, a lava, a red, like a different type of lava, or they call it blood water. But this one is really important, this little blue one with the lies in it. This item, um, if you touch it, makes you retry your shot. So what sometimes happens is your ball will leave the course. Maybe, you know, you hit this uh, present and it bounces out of the course. Um, if you set up another course right next to it, like for example, this is going to be where the next one does, and you bounce it and it goes over here, um, the user can sort of hack your level, jump across from one hole to the next. Uh, but if you set up this invisible wall here, they're not going to be able to do that. As soon as their ball crosses this um, entity, it counts as a missed stroke and they have to retake it before they took it. So I would recommend placing these walls uh, if you want. Maybe you're okay with people who enable jump from the jump from one course to another, and that's part of the fun of it. But if you don't want people jumping across from one hole to the next, uh, block off your holes with these walls. So if I wanted to completely block this off, I could set these up like this. Okay, okay, and now no matter what, if they leave this golf course uh, area, they're not going to be able to jump into the next course unless somehow they are able to jump over this wall and into the next uh, course. Okay, once we set up our first hole, uh, we can set up a second hole. And in this case, I'm going to follow, follow the same principles. I'm going to choose a different theme for this one. Um, maybe I like the ancient floors. Okay, we can see the distance between these is not exactly the same thickness of our piece. So if we do that, we sort of get this overlap. And I don't like that, uh, but if I wanted to keep this barrier and the grid size the way it is, what I would do is I would go to our re- size tool, undo snap, and then shrink it down to the right perspective. Okay, so I'm going to re-enable snap, and now I'm going to 
create some pieces to fill in the back side. Okay, so now you can see in order to get my pieces to line up, they sort of stick out from my wall. We have a couple options with this as well. We can um, do the same thing, shrink these down this way and get them all to line up. Or if we want to be a little bit creative, maybe this is part of the course. And on this side, we have more items. Maybe this is where we're going to start. All right, now we need to add a ball spawn and we need to add an ending hole. I like using the flags. I'm gonna place that there. All right, so now we have two full holes. Uh, ideally, you wanna create 18. That's gonna be the max that you can create for any overall map. Um, that'll make it fun for the users to download as well. Um, but at this point, I want to save my progress so far, and it saves based off of the settings we did when we first set this up. Uh, and then we can hit this play button to play test our map. We can decide which map we want to start on or which uh, hole we want to start on. Let's start from the first hole. All right, that worked. Okay, and that one did not look like it worked. Uh, to leave the editor, we're going to hit the escape button, and then we're going to hit retire. Okay, and when we look at it, we can see we can't see that um, the box for this uh, flagpole. It's too far low. And that's why the level didn't end, and we had that little issue. Drop this in. I'm going to make sure that I can see it. And I can't. It's too far low. Um, so I'm going to unsnap this. Raise this up. So now I can see the yellow. And that yellow is where the ball needs to touch to end the, the course. And I can retest this. Now if I don't want to test the first course because that worked, I can start at course number two. All right. That works. I'm going to hit escape and retire, so when I go back to the main editor, I'm going to save my change. And at this point, we can build out the rest of our holes using all the different tools that we have. Um, I'm going to spice it up as you like and build out the rest of your holes. Um, once you're happy with your course, then we can move into uh, the gears. And this is going to be our settings, and we want to go to course settings. This is where we can edit the name of our map, the description. We can change the music in the skybox if we want to. And then we can look at the submission readiness. This is gonna show us uh, if we're ready to publish. And if all these boxes are checked, we can technically publish it to the workshop right now. Um, we can then adjust the pars for each hole. And if all these are checked, we can hit the publish button and then our map will be published. And that's it. That's the basics since the update.